I've been gone for a while. What I miss? You went to Vegas. I went to Vegas. And you went and you went to the Afghan wigs and you didn't take any of us. The Afghan wigs were amazing. That's becoming like a fine fall tradition. Dan and my first date was an Afghan wig show. So now every time they come around, we're like, well, we have to go. Um, <coughs> you didn't Vegas, take any so of I us. I saw the most amazing show in Vegas. <coughs> we saw Cirque du Soleil. That was great. You know, whatever. Um, we saw a guy, a circus <laughs> performer, who does a whole circus with all rescue cats and dogs. Adorable. But puppetry of the penis. This is a thing. It takes place at the Erotic Heritage Museum, which is exactly what it sounds like. Um, which ha It has a wedding chapel, all with, and all the columns are dicks. And if we'd known that, we would not have gone to Hawaii. But, so puppetry of the penis. Oh, here's Dottie. Hi, Dottie, come here. Come say hi. Excuse me, you pulled me away from treats. What's the big idea? Dottie really, really super deluxe hates to be held, don't you? Oh, look at that face. Show them your angry face. <laughs> okay, all right, go eat your treats. I'm sorry. Um, no, Tara, you can't just do kitties. <laughs> what? Puppetry of the penis. So it's these two guys. And they get on stage and they're wearing like capes and sneakers. And then they take off the capes and they're fucking naked. And they stretch and twist their penises, scrotum, and balls into shapes. The one, the, their like trademark is the hamburger, which is they like take the balls, wrap the shaft around it, squeeze it, and turn it sideways. So it looks like hamburger. You're one lying. Guy, no, I'm not. Look it up. This is this is a lie. You were telling. No, you can Google it right now. There You're... are dudes that do this. They did like a one guy stretched his scrotum into like a pelican and made it squawk and stuff. And yeah, they do, and like I had no idea penises were so stretchy. I really didn't. One guy actually, the whole front row was gay dudes, and one guy stretched his scrotum into such a convincing set of labia that all the gays like recoiled in horror. You gotta look it up. It's true. It's for real. And if you're ever in Vegas, you need to see this show. You can't you cannot miss it. And they invite you up. They ask for volunteers. And if you go up, they'll teach you how to do the hamburger and you can do it in front of the crowd. You too can twist your penis into a knot in front of a room full of strangers if you want. It started in Australia. <laughs> Tara is telling the truth a thousand percent. I, I know Nash doesn't believe me, but I, I swear to you. I am telling the truth. Am I on my own now? Okay. Cats come back, we're on our own. Nash, Nash is gone, it's just you and me, guys. And I don't have the stories, so. Uh... Well, I don't have any cats, they left. No. No. <laughs> it's true. No. You gotta look it up. Oh yeah, in the no. opening act. No. The op <laughs> no. 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 Mike no. wants me to tell you about the guy no. that opened for the Afghan wigs. No. But... no. 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 You guys, this no. show is really, really good. No. Of the penis, you gotta Google it. They have a website, they have a Twitter. I'm not sure if they have anything on YouTube. They should. No. That would, I think they'd probably get kicked off YouTube, probably. No. Also, like, no. puns all day. No. Like, every no. dick pun you can possibly imagine is in this show. It's great. No. Have you heard of a guy named Harmar Superstar? He's opening for the Afghan wigs right now. And it's like, if John Lovitz's character from The Wedding Singer really went on tour, but decided to 
write his own soul and R and B music. Yeah, it's hipstery. Not as good as not as compelling as puppetry of penis at all. <laughs> no. Hi, why are you scratching on my chair when there's a scratching thing right here? Is it because I picked you up? There's a scratching thing right here, you little miscreant. No. 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 I like that someone in the chat is warning them that it's not safe for work. It's called puppetry of the penis. Yeah, no. It's not safe for work. La 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 la. La 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 la. La la. description of that show would make you think it's safe for work. La 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 la. Spoiler alert, it's not. La la. Did you miss me? That's the show tonight, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs> We're done. I watched you had a very nice British man who was completely unprepared. Yes, Dom. He, he was he was very nice, and, and Luke jumped in as well. Okay. So now that... Terry, you, you just did like a whole fucking bit yourself. I mean, we did the, do we even need stories tonight? I mean, my God. Where's my fucking intro? I had to tell you about my vacation. That is... Also, the best Mexican food in Vegas is attached to a giant strip club. That is never really eat... good, authentic, organic Mexican food. Yeah, unbelievable. But... Yeah, but never eat the food in the strip club. It's not in the strip club. It's just they share a building. But you wouldn't know it was there if you didn't like know it was there. Oh, come on. Where is the intro? Where is intro? God damn it. Fucking dick stuff and why was there dick stuff? Where's my fucking intro? Here it is. Okay. Here we go. If you go to Vegas, you have to see the show. I will buy your ticket. No. No. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. We'll say we like to call. What the fuck is wrong with you? And where are we going to start tonight? Jesus Christ. So we've had whole bunches and bunches and bunches and bunches of herbicanes. And we have more. Yes, wait, there, there's more. There's more. It's it's just been hurricane year. And one thing well, I've since I he's getting like the edge of Jose tomorrow. Like it's yeah. not supposed to be too bad, but we're getting like the edge. Since since I lived in a hurricane area, I was keeping very close track on it. And something I've noticed about just about every news outlet that when the emergency management office for each individual town comes up, they have you know they have the podium, the press conference, and everything, and they've all had uh, sign language interpreters. Yes. And some of those motherfuckers, I have to say, have been working for their money. Because mm -hmm. I cause I don't know which one. I think it was one in Florida. He's just, as he was signing, his face was just like. You got to look up the chick that does ASL for the Wu-Tang Clan. Well. Totally unassuming little white chick. Sign language is Wu-Tang like she's in the fucking Wu-Tang Clan. It's great. Of course, this was Florida, which means that. Uh, Fuckery. Yes, fuckery. Um, you would think when you're checking for an interpreter, you would check to see if the guy actually fucking knows sign language. Oh. Sign language interpreter used gibberish, warned of bears, monsters, during Hurricane Irma update. You know, it never actually occurred to me how you would sign in gibberish. Officials, but I guess if you're just doing random shit. Yes. Officials in Manatee County, Florida are under fire after an interpreter for the deaf warned about pizza and monsters during an emergency uh, related to Hurricane Irma. The interpreter, Marshall Green, a lifeguard for the county, has a brother who is deaf. Uh, Green was used as interpreter for a September 8th press conference regarding the incoming storm and possible evacuation. 
Members of the deaf community said green mostly signed gibberish, referencing pizza, monsters, and using the phrase, help you at that time to use bear big during the event. Other inf information signed to viewers was incomplete. Maybe he thought he was doing the press conference for Cloudy with a Chance of Meatball, <laughs> which has pizza monsters, I think. It's when you are getting some, how it is hard is it to actually call like a local ASL school or just to check to see we need a, yeah. we need a certified interpreter, not just the lifeguard whose brother is deaf. I kind of feel bad for his brother because clearly they're not communicating. No, yet. they're not. You could, you have to imagine they're in a conversation and he's like, yeah, I lost my job, the car, it isn't working. And his brother is saying, bear pizza. <laughs> it's like when you meow at your cat. Yes. And the cat just looks at you like you're a fucking moron. Yes. This guy's brother. This guy's brother is just like, yeah, man, pizza bears. <laughs> Is, how hard is it? I mean, you have to get someone who knows what the fuck they're doing. You wouldn't think it'd be that hard. Let me show you a little, little take of it here. This, th this is the guy, the guy in the yellow shirt here is the interpreter. And don't, whatever he's doing here, don't do this because he's not. <laughs> it's just not words. Yeah. The pizza is deadly. Pizza looking monster of YR purple. And here's here's the uh the uh the water insurance settled gesticulation. Gesticulation will mother. Here one shelters. What a lot, PP. Want start. Oh, he actually spelled, got commissioner right. Jay. I mean, someone in the chat is pointing out these probably aren't a lot of commonly used words. Like, I can speak enough Spanish to get by in a conversation, but when I was selling makeup in a Spanish-speaking area, I don't know how to say foundation or bronzer. Like, <laughs> I get that. Like, if he has conversational ASL, <laughs> he like, just that's said... why you have to check. Need a bear monster. That's why you have to check the skill level of the person you're asking to do your very important thing that will affect people's living. I, and I, I don't mean like their job. I mean, I, they're being alive. I actually wonder if his if his brother did this to him on purpose. If his brother I taught him. Because... <laughs> They're emergency instructions. Like, I wonder if his brother taught him sign language over the years and his brother just taught him bullshit just to fuck with him. <laughs> and then the one day he needs to use it. <laughs> like, who's the exchange st student from Can't Hardly Wait where the only English they'll teach him is, would you like to touch my penis? <laughs> so that's how he greets everybody. Oh. I'm watching. The video is amazing. It's amazing. Toys for who Mexican? <laughs> yeah, so I'm feeling like a lot of people didn't get the information they needed. Lucky Penny. <laughs> so anyway, moving on. I, of course we were using this story. Of course. Catherine gave this one to me. Lots of you gave this one to me. Of course. Of course, and I'm starting to wonder if maybe out there some journalists are catching on to this shit. I would like to think in, in, in some like weird underground circles between journalists, they're like, hey, you made it to that idiot show. No way, really? Yeah, he put you on the show. If we're like a weird like type of cred. Yeah. Well, I, I, I like a journalist merit badge. I'm of the impression whoever wrote this. Oh, this is uh, Lisa uh, Gutierrez. I, I think Lisa might have been angling to get us on this one. 
Mad Pooper wanted by Colorado Springs police. Colorado neighborhood is raising a stink over a jogger who keeps defecating around the houses, even in front of children. Neighbors have nicknamed her the, quote, mad pooper. And they've asked people to make this, they've asked police to make this squatter stop. The woman has been leaving number twos for nearly two months now. When Bud, uh, Kathy Bud's children told her one day, there's a lady taking a poop. When Bud went outside, she caught the woman, mid-squat, pants down, pooping outside her house. Are you really taking a poop here in front of kids? An incredulous Bud asked her. Yes, sorry, the woman answered. Yes, sorry. Just when you gotta go, you gotta go, right? I, 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 you know, (laughs) this is, this is a lupus guru. Oh, God, there's video. I don't want video of some lady pooping around. I've got to get to the to the to the point. Well, they, not OK, there's not video. There's just pictures of her. They've got pictures. Thank God. They don't actually have her pooping on camera. Wait, do you? I mean, I saw pink flamingos. I don't need a repeat. Thank you very much. Like, do you not have a toilet? I think what this is, is like a really super dedicated jogger who doesn't want to let her heart rate drop. So poop before you go for your run. You would think. But I, you know, they're, no, got I a car. some really devoted runners. I don't get them, but I know them. Like, I don't, mm. I don't understand people who take pleasure in running. I don't, I don't get it. Mm. Don't at me. I don't want to hear about why you love running six miles a day. I think you're crazy. We're just going to have to agree to disagree. But I know some people that like chart their runs on RunKeeper and it's on Facebook. Like, I ran eight miles today. And I'm like, that's so cool. I watched eight episodes of Big Little Lies today. (laughs) And I'm pretty sure they're not just taking a shit anywhere. Like, there's ways to handle this. There are ways. She didn't use them, but there are ways. She carries napkins. And I love how the neighborhood has decided she is the mad pooper. That was the name they decided on. It's like, really? That's the best you guys had? She may have IBS. I don't fucking care. Where it depends. There's things you can do. Don't... There is. I, I don't want to hear your excuses. I don't want to hear your explanations. There are no excuses for running around shitting in people's yards when you're a human being. If you're a really cute dog, that's one thing. You're a dog. You shit outside. You're a human being. We are not cavemans anymore. You don't shit in people's yards. Yeah, like plot your plot your fucking run past the Starbucks. Where fucking depends if you have to. Yeah, go in, buy a water, use the bathroom. You do this in my neighborhood, I'm shooting you with my hose. <laughs> That's what you do with the dog. Get off the get off my lawn. Stop pooping here. You're gonna get to drink from the garden hose. I don't. I still don't know why they decided. Like, there's always one dude who'll make an excuse for somebody, isn't there? There's always one dude there that is. will come up with like a disability that makes what they're doing okay. And I am not. Disabilities are real, and the disabled deserve our sympathy. But guys. Yeah, this is kind of setting yourself up to be in a bad situation. If you, you are beyond the point of reason when you are defending shitting in people's yards. I'm just like mad pooper. Why not the shitter sprinter? That the the, the, the sprinting the, the sprinter shitter that that's right off the top of my head. You could have can't put that in the papers. There's got to be something then better than. Mad pooper. It just doesn't pop. I mean, she doesn't appear to be insane. I expect her to be like flinging. She doesn't appear to be insane. <laughs> She's stopping on her morning run to shit in people's yards. Well, Where yeah, but insane. I've, you think mad pooper? That's kind of like a a super villain name or some shit. You know. I'm explaining. I'm explaining. Like she doesn't seem to be insane. 
I'm like some some I'm thinking like some weaponized poop here. You know, some poop bombs like that. The fucking technically any poop that is not your own is weaponized because it's bio waste. The runs runner. There you go. The runs runner. That didn't even say they Gabe came up with that one. That one didn't even take any. Yeah. This you got a man. You have to understand when you name the supervillain, that sticks. Well, it's maybe good. they didn't want to make it something cool and encourage her. <laughs> The defecation dasher. There, don't that? Yes. There you go. The fecal flyer. <laughs> the crazy crapper. <laughs> the magnesium milk marathoner doesn't really roll off the tongue. <laughs> Points for alliteration, but gotta be snappy. Oh, uh, all right. Uh, next up. Oh, Jesus Christ. There are situations in life that are quite sincerely, you have to stop and wonder, how did you get into this clusterfuck? Often. And this, th there is no other way, because everyone except the kid in this story is an idiot. Everyone except the kid. First off... future. Let's start. Let's start with part one. Man arrested after scaring daughter with clown mask. An Ohio man has been charged after chasing his six-year-old daughter around a neighborhood while wearing a clown mask. Please say the girl. <gasps> yeah. Another man is charged with firing a gun. Please say the girl first jumped into a stranger's car and then ran into a stranger's apartment while screaming that a clown was chasing her. Police say a man in an apartment building came outside and fired a gunshot into the ground. The father told police he chased his daughter to discipline her for behavioral issues instead of spanking her. What? Motherfucker, have you never heard of a timeout? Or like, no iPad for a week. So. And at the one. point where your child is forgetting stranger danger and just straight up running into strangers cars and houses, maybe, maybe you're done. So. Point the first bad parenting, to say the least. The second is when your bad parenting involves the entire neighborhood. You know, when they say it takes a village, this is not what they mean. No. This is not how that works at all. Mm -mm. And on the third point, the drunken neighbor, I guess he was thinking he was helping. But gun. I mean, I, going for the gun wouldn't be my first move. No. But of all the times we've seen people pull out guns, I feel like this is one of the more reasonable because huh? there's a small child being terrorized by a crazy person. Yes. Yes. I like, mean, this is one of the more sensible gun pulls we've seen. I mean, how did he think this was going to be OK with everybody? Well, he didn't spank her. He just traumatized her and ensured she'll need therapy someday. I want to chase my screaming six year old around the neighborhood. This is going to be fine. She didn't clean her room, guys. Yeah, everyone's going to be cool with this. No. I, you, yeah. Six years old, I would do that to, like, you heard about the YouTube couple that, like, is being charged for pranking their children. Like, this is, yes. like, like, there is, like, scaring your kids by, like, jumping out from behind a corner. Like, there's, like, fun scaring your kids, you know, or you put a rubber lizard under their pillow, or, you know, there's fun, like, yeah. messing with the family. This is not that. No, it's not. Not in any the way second your child is running and screaming from you in actual abject terror and jumping into strangers' cars, it's not the fun kind of scaring anymore. Oh, more! Oh, we have more fun with neighbors. It's from Missouri. I'm kind of I'm kind of glad Dan isn't here because he would be grumpy. 
Uh, Depends. He's not a huge fan of his home state right now. Off the top of my head, I can't remember this. Gang, was Missouri part of the Confederacy? Anyone uh, in the channel? Do you guys know this uh, one? Quick. He, he Jeopardy not, question. Do, do, he, would, do, he would know that. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. No, no, Missouri was okay. not part of the Confederacy. Okay, good, good. Well, that just makes this even stupider then. Although someone said yes, in fact, they invaded Kansas, so, but mostly we're getting those. Missouri was not yeah. a state yet. I was inclined to think it wasn't a state yet, but I wasn't yeah. sure, so I didn't want to like. Okay, well, then that makes this even stupider. Missouri man claims he's not racist, displays sa slaves for sale sign over Confederate flag. A man in Liberty, Missouri put up a slaves for sale sign in front of his house after claiming to be treated like a racist for brandishing a Confederate flag. This is some, welcome to the rabbit hole here. This is going to get kind of nuts. So they called you racist. So you were like, let me be more racist. In a report. Bold strategy, Cotton. <laughs> Let's see how it works for him. In a report from Fox 4 Kansas City News, Richard Geisenheiner, Heiner, Geisenheiner? Am I saying that right? Richard Geisenheiner. Looks like it said the sign is a reaction to being treated like a racist because he displays the Confederate flag. Quote, if people actually believe the Confederate flag stands for slavery, well, I might as well just be as stupid as they are. You're so much stupider. Like, you win, bro. You win at stupid. <sighs> The Confederate flag is for people that are tired of the government telling them what to do and think. That's what a Southern rebel is. No, 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 no. It's for people who decided to secede from the government and start a fucking war over, yeah, you know, treason. There was, there, there was a whole other country that was Confederacy. There was, there you're was thinking a president. Of the, I think you're thinking of the yellow don't tread on me with that's the little a different. That's, that's a different. Yeah. Okay. So people think you're a racist because you have the Confederate flag. So to prove to them that how wrong they are, you put up something that is explicitly racist. And I might want, I have to point out, it's on plywood spray painted. Yeah, no craftsmanship. With, instead of the word four, he used the number four. Well, I'm convinced. This he's, is a new argument, he's... though. Like, wh when Charlottesville happened, the argument became, well, if you call people Nazis, they're going to act like Nazis. And maybe you should just hug your local white supremacist and, and cure them with love. Counterpoint, go fuck yourself. If my, if my calling you a Nazi is what made you a Nazi, you got a weak constitution. Yeah, I mean, can we just start calling them idiots? Yeah. That's, I mean, there you go. Because, uh, I mean, clearly they're, they're forced by their weak will to be whatever they're called. So, you know, can we call you ag agoraphobics and you'll never leave the house again? Ooh, that's a magical idea. Ultimately, Geisenheiner took down the sign Tuesday afternoon, though he still continues to fly the Confederate flag. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this on Dan's Facebook. No, God damn it. Why are you doing this? Because he's out with friends, so I need him to see it. God damn it. Really, Facebook? You're going to be a dick right now? Facebook is know. trying to spare Dan. So this. Oh, oh. Stop that new computer. Stop that right now. 
in other circumstances, this would be our last story of the night. Um, because it is Florida, and it is the aftermath of the hurricane, and it's looting, which I, that's, that's the one thing no one has any respect for. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care who you are. I've never met someone who said, yeah, looting's awesome. We should all go looting. I mean, I get when people loot for things they need in a disaster situation. Like if you okay. have no fucking food and none of the stores are open and you go steal some food, I get it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let, let's give them the benefit of the doubt then. I guess they, they really just needed a power utility pole. Probably not. Uh, <laughs> when you start looting big screen TVs, it's like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sheriff's officials in Jacksonville say two men are accused of trying to steal a $2,500 utility pole days after Hurricane Irma. That's not going to get your power on faster. Is that what you think? <laughs> Do you think you can just build your own power grid? <laughs> That's not how that works. Like, you can't just take the power pole and put it in your yard and magically you have power. That's not how it works. I'm not clear on all the details of how it works, <laughs> but I know that's not how. Uh, 42-year-old Blake Lee Waller and 46-year-old Victor Walter Peller were arrested on grand theft charges on Wednesday after someone reported seeing them load the pole onto a sports utility vehicle. Like, also, not stealthy. <laughs> not stealthy. <laughs> Police report says an officer noticed a light pole missing from an area on top of a bridge and spotted a, ve spotted a vehicle driving with the pole on top. He stopped the vehicle and arrested the men. The report says Appeller told investigators he was moving the pole because it was on the ground so close to the traffic lanes. Really? I mean, at least that's... A decent excuse that would make sense if you hadn't put it on your car and driven off. <laughs> I'm just going to put this way over here where the children... <laughs> like, if they had caught you lifting and moving it, that would work. Right. But when you're, but like... You're strapped it to your car. We're just going to put it on the other side of town where no one can, can, can be hurt right. by it. <laughs> Why are you stealing this? Like, what's your goal? Scrap metal. Really? Yep. It, what they'll do is, yeah, a database search found Appeller had 72 scrap metal related transactions from recycling since January. How do you turn that into scrap? You take it to the recycling plant and you get money for it. You get like pennies on the dollar for it. They're not going to be a little suspicious of that? Yeah, that's a big issue. People will, will break into uh, abandoned houses or even new houses. And well, I know you're supposed to, like, if you buy a um, a repo house, you're supposed to really be careful because people rip out all the copper wire. Yep. And the pipes. Yeah. And the pipes. Yeah. And you'll buy this beautiful house that has no wiring and no pipes. Mm-hmm. But the, just the gall on them to put it on top of the car and tool off, like... Doop a doo! I did you think you weren't gonna get caught? It's not like you're hard to spot in traffic. Yeah. I mean, if they put out an APB, all they have to say is just look for the the, the one with the traffic pole on it's top a car of this car. With a fucking pole on it. <laughs> Shouldn't be too hard to find. Now, like I said, normally that would probably have been our stopping point for the night, but no, no, Pulling no, no. Puppetry of the penis looking pretty good right now, isn't it? You know, Tara? One guy stretched his long enough that he could get the tip in his mouth. He called it the didgeridoo. Yeah. I don't think they do this in the show. No. Firefighters called after man gets penis stuck in gym weight plate. Ooh. I know they call it the love muscle, but you can't make it bigger that way. 
May seem like common sense, but not to a German man who did just that, getting himself into trouble after his penis became stuck in the hole of a 2.5 kilogram gym weight plate. To make matters worse, he needed the help of the fire brigade and their power tools to remove it. Fire brigade was on Friday called to the hospital after doctors were unable to free the man's penis. The man was sedated, and the fire brigade spent three hours freeing him with axle grinders and hydraulic rescue devices. Because, I mean, I, I've never had a penis, but I feel like if I did, probably the last things I would want near it would be things called axle grinders. Or really any kind of power tool at all. And that picture, you're, the, the, the picture there, that is the actual weight. That's how they had to cut it up to get it. First of all. You shouldn't get to use it anymore. <laughs> and I don't mean the weight. Like, you yeah. have failed the test. <laughs> you were and given you a dick. <laughs> and you just couldn't be responsible with it. Like, if you can't be responsible with the car, <laughs> your parents take away the car. You lose your license. If you can't be responsible with your dick, you don't get to have one. I, it's probably why I'm not president. How? I'm chopping off dicks all over the place. How? How in the... How? How? Did this seem like... Well, there's a hole, and I've got a dick. I feel like that's about 50% of the average man's thoughts. <laughs> Like, after a decade of doing the show, I feel like that's how y'all just walk around. We don't, though. Well, I don't. I wonder if I could fuck that. I don't. Like, I feel like it's a very thin membrane keeping y'all from just humping literally everything with a hole in it. I would think the fact that I still, that I've never gotten my dick caught in anything and ended up on my own show. That we know of. That you know, yeah. Attests to the fact, I, I understand. I understand not to stick my dick in things. That doesn't, I mean, let, let's, let's put aside whether or not men do or don't. That doesn't look like a comfortable place to put your dick. I mean, there's a whole subset of kink that's all about tying weights to dicks and stuff like that. Like, CBT is a thing. And by that, I do not mean cognitive behavioral therapy, but it's enjoyable that they share that acronym. But that's not how it's done. Like, they, they use different methods so they can safely extract your dick from the weights when you're done. Will in the channel says, if you look at your dick and your first thought is, do you even lift, bro? You have a problem. I don't know. I've, I've thought that when I've looked at a few dicks in my time. <laughs> I mean... I didn't mean lift, though. He got his dick in he got his dick in the hole. Good on you. And then he had to have gotten excited after he did so. I mean, not necessarily, because it's shaped to be easier going in than coming out. Well, yeah, but there's still that little ridge so, and you'd have to like and that would oh, that would hurt because that's, that's a sense. That's what I'm saying. Like hole. if it was like a just fit then you wouldn't necessarily have to have gotten excited because there's there's a distinct arrowhead design. Well, no, my to... thinking is he wasn't excited when he got it in there, but then he was excited afterward and we had the cock ring effect. Yeah, I mean, it could be. So what was he thinking about that made him so excited while he had a five pound weight on his dick? He just needs a really good femdom. It's true. That's, that's like a it's, possibility. It's fine to have <sighs> these kinks. You have to be smart about them. If your kink is hanging five pounds of weight off your dick, you got to be smart about how you're going to do it. There are, there are service. There are people who will assist you. It's expensive, <clears throat> but they'll do it. And if you don't want to pay them, I'm confident there's some kind of video on, like, Pornhub that you can figure out the instructions to. I mean, whatever, just about whatever your fetish is, so long as it's legal between consenting adults, someone out there, for there's a price... Somebody, there's somebody on FetLife who is just dying to help you with it. Yes. 
There is for a price, someone will assist you with this shit. And the fire department are not it. They don't no. want to be part. Don't. That's that's not what their training is for. No, don't enlist the fire department against their will. Listen, my dad was a fireman. This is not what he. Oh God, no, no, no! Your dad was how? How many issue? How many stories? He never told me. Like I never heard anything. Like now, to be fair, he wasn't part of like the ambulance rescue. Hmm. He just put out fires. Or, so I don't know that he saw a lot of things like this. We know from experience this happens a lot, Tara. Yeah, I mean. It's possible he just didn't tell us. Because, <laughs> I mean, my parents are old school Irish Catholics. So and you talk about some things with your children. I can just imagine him coming home to your mom and be like, oh, you'd never believe what the jackass stuck his cock into today. He did come home one night. We, have, we, had, a, we had a rabbit named Nightfire because he found it at a fire one night. <laughs> and he came home and he came into the bedroom and he said, Kitch. He called my mother. Everybody called my mother Kitchy. He called her Kitch. Kitch, look what I have in my pocket. And my mom didn't even open her eyes and said, I know what you have in your pocket, Pat. I'm sleeping. <laughs> he was like, no, it's 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 a bunny. <laughs> I have a bunny in my coat pocket. <laughs> Alive bunny. <laughs> I know what you have in your pocket, Pat. He's like, you really don't, though. You're guessing entirely wrong. <laughs> So I guess the first thing we learned tonight is if you need someone to help you with your kink, it's not the fire department. No. Even if your kink is firefighters, they're not the firefighters who are... No. No. Your kink is okay so long as everyone involved wants to be involved. Yes. Yeah. We've learned that if you're trying... To make a buck off the wreckage of a hurricane, for the for fuck's sake, at least be a little discreet. Yeah. You know, don't just put the utility pole in the back of your SUV. Like, I'm sure somebody's chain link fence fell over. <laughs> well, not even just that. I mean, if you if the real money is in selling uh, FEMA of the trailers back to them, there you go. That's how you you make money off of off of misery there. But we shouldn't be helping with this. We should. We've learned that if everybody thinks something you're doing is really racist, doubling down is not going to dissuade them of the notion. In general, mm -hmm. I find that if it's like you against everybody else, probably everybody else isn't the asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Just probability doesn't support that. We've learned that your child care discipline should not involve the entire fucking neighborhood or any Stephen King stories at all. No, but what are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? This like, is Stephen King is a prolific and talented writer. Doesn't hasn't written any parenting books as far as I'm aware. Ch child, not his child discipline is not a field trip. It should never be duh. We've learned that if you're going to run, you better plan your poops accordingly. Not in people. Why would you be pooping in somebody's yard? What part of your brain is going, they'll be cool with this? Well, the dogs get to do it. Why can't I? This you is not a dog. Especially in front of the kids. And the dogs have humans to pick it up after them. I mean, especially in front of the kids. Like, the, the, the kids are going, Mommy, there's a lady pooping in the yard. Why would you not poop in front of a child? Turn the hose on him. And finally, we've learned if you need a sign language interpreter, check their credentials. Do a little research. Because otherwise... You know, it's an emergency situation, the phone lines aren't great, but... Otherwise, we could be in the middle of a disaster and people will be looking out in for intense terror for bear pizzas. Yes. Pizza bear monster. And after Sharknado, who knows? <laughs> puppy monkey baby. <laughs> uh. 
time we learned puppetry of the penis and that you all need to google it and if you're in vegas you need to see it okay i need cats hey you come get a treat <laughs>